This is a short gallery of how I use flowers in my work. Some of them are fabric, some of them are metal. I hope you enjoy it. The first image is from my first hat collection. I call this the orchid. And if I could go back and get one piece from any part of my output, this is the hat that I would go and get. It's made from rat tail cord and buckram. The flower petals are shaped on the buckram. Then the rat tail cord is stitched on it. You see the veil has beads sewn on it. It's on a kind of a plum colored velvet base. This dates from 1985, 86. And it is really, to this day, one of my favorite pieces. This next hat is kind of the same thing. This is buckram base with rat tail cord stitch on it. This was actually for a client. I call this Anthurium. And if you look at the flower and the leaf, the shading on the flower and the leaf are done with bleach in an airbrush so that I could get a rather three-dimensional look. This hat is what I call the lily for obvious reasons. It is the same buckram base for the leaves. The, the petals are stitched with ivory rat tail and the leaf, the photos make it look a little more gray, but it was actually sort of a hunter green. It was quite nice. This next hat was what I call the magnolia. It had a buckram base that sat on the head. It also had leaves that were buckram base. And the uh, flowers were wire frames with the white satin stitched on it. This next hat was a fond memory. This was, I would say, March of 87. The flowers on these are what are called concertina roses. The client came in and she had a lace skirt. It's not photographed here because it was about $50,000 worth of lace. It was grandma's wedding dress from about 1880. And she wanted a headpiece to go on it. So this particular headpiece is what I made for her. You can see in the long view and also in the detail that there is what looks like a veil, but that was actually under the large lace piece. As I said, the lace piece, it was actually about six feet in diameter and I didn't want it dragging around at the reception. So I made that detachable. The lace that you see on the back of this hat, it was trimmed from grandma's dress. So it was, it was quite a wonderful piece, and it was one of the first times I got to work with materials that were spectacularly expensive. These next three images are metal. I had this thing for orchids, and I was really off and running with them. So the first one is a, an oxidized bronze, and I oxidized it black and polished up the edges. The challenge when you're making flowers out of metal is that you want them to be hefty, but you don't want them to tear holes in the garment. So this, while it looks quite heavy, it's quite light. The next one is sterling silver and bronze, the flower itself being sterling silver. I oxidized the sterling silver with this substance called liver of sulfur which stunk up my studio to high heavens because I had to cook the entire brooch in the liver of sulfur after I had it all soldered together. But it was quite a nice piece. The third one is my favorite of all of them, and this is just orchid. I made this in mid to late 87, and this was one of those that I just never ever wore it. I could never sell it. I put a high whopping price on it because I didn't want to get rid of it. But it sat in my archive until my wedding day. And then it was the perfect piece. This next piece is yet another orchid. This is a belt. 
it's hard to tell from the photos, but it fits under the rib cage and onto the hip bones. So it is a structure of its own. The orchid is hammered bronze with uh, sterling stamens. The leaves are the buckram with uh, rat tail sewn on. And you can tell the shading on the leaves was achieved by bleach and dye in my airbrush to give it more dimension. It's quite a heavy piece, and this is what I call an epic piece. Every now and then I'll do an epic piece that isn't for commercial sale. If someone wanted to give me money for it, I would certainly take it. But this is just for me, just to see what I can do. This next gown is modeled by one of my favorite models. Her name is Loretta, and she was absolutely gorgeous. It's gold lame with a black chiffon pulled over. And you can see in the detail there is passementerie and there are roses. The roses themselves in the close-up are brass wire screen roses. They're made in the method that's called the concertina rose. And what you see in the, the extended close-up or the intense close-up is that there is tulle, nylon tulle, covering the roses. I, I made it part of the aesthetic because while the roses are beautiful in brass wire screen, they snag every last thing they come in contact with and shred it. So putting the nylon tulle over these roses kept them from shredding everything around them. This is a handbag. It is, um, I'd say, probably 8 inches wide by 10 or 11 inches long, exclusive of the tassel. It is a tree and a sunset. And in the um, extreme close-ups, you can see that it's passementary. And then I have made little fabric flowers on the tree. The, the trunk of the tree itself is black suede and you can see there's some beadwork and layers of um, organza underneath the chiffon to create somewhat of a sunset. This piece is quite a fun piece. I call it the chrysanthemum wrap. It's really fabric ruffles created to make an evening wrap. It holds in the front, it, there's a closure. It sits on the shoulders. You can kind of get a sense of it on the dress form. But it's quite a lot, it's quite a lot of fun, and it was quite a lot of fun to make. It's not technically a flower, but like I said, I call it the chrysanthemum wrap, so I'm putting it in here because I can, and I wanted you to see it. And finally, this is a cape. It is um, avocado green taffeta and turquoise iridescent organza. It's one of my cutwork pieces, and the object here was to take the flower fabric motif and really translate it, especially on the collar. The collar was the real challenge because something like this, if it doesn't look effortless, if it doesn't look like it grew that way, it fails. So I think it turned out nicely. So I hope you've enjoyed this little gallery of how I use fabric flowers in my work.